In the first Fatal Frame, you explore the abandoned Himuro mansion in search of your missing brother, Mafuyu. As you make your way through the haunted building, you learn more about the tragic history of the area and the horrific rituals that left the mansion in its current state. Yet despite what the American version claimed upon release, the game is not actually based on true events. The inspiration for the rituals that take place in the game, however, do take bits and pieces from real-life folklore, so let's dive in and take a look at what. The Himuro Mansion is located somewhere in the Mutsu Province, in the northeast of Japan. The northeast is generally considered to be an unlucky direction in Japan, because that's where the Kimon, or Demon's Gate, lies. For that reason, much of the inspiration for the Fatal Frame games comes from this region. The Himuro Mansion is located deep in the mountains, surrounded by five Shinto shrines, and also just happens to sit above the Hell Gate, with which it's charged with keeping closed through certain rituals every ten years. In Japanese, this is called the Yomi no Mon, or the Gate of the Underworld, and these locations can actually be found all over Japan. Perhaps the most famous real-life entrance to Yomi can be found in Higashi Izumo, a place not too far from where I lived. In the Fatal Frame world, too, there are numerous gates that lead to the underworld, and each area has their own particular ritual for keeping them closed. The Himuro Mansion is no different. The rituals that kick off the events leading up to the first game take place in 1837, eventually culminating in their failure and unleashing what's known as the Calamity. 1837 is towards the end of the Edo period, and as you discover while walking around the house, the Himuro Mansion was once a wealthy and prosperous samurai residence. This was a big, important family in the area. Each of the five shrines that surround the mansion houses a holy mirror. Mirrors are particularly important in the Shinto religion. This stems from Japanese mythology, when Amaterasu, the sun goddess, gave a mirror to her grandson Ninigi when he descended to Earth. That same mirror had been used to lure Amaterasu out of hiding when she abandoned the world and left it in darkness. She was momentarily blinded by her own radiance when she saw her reflection in it, and the cave she was hiding in was sealed up so she couldn't return, bringing light back to the world. That same mirror is now one of the three sacred treasures of Japan, representing knowledge. Mirrors later came to function as goshintai, or physical objects in which the kami are said to reside. Mirrors are a connection between our world and the unseen spiritual world, and in modern shrines you'll often find a mirror sitting upon an altar at which you can worship. Although we don't see any of the five shrines mentioned in the game, a news clipping mentions that sometime in 1986, just before the events of the game take place, a large earthquake destroyed the five mirrors that were kept at the shrines. A festival, called the Five Gods Festival, was held every ten years, and during this time, all five mirrors gathered in the one location. However, when they were destroyed in the earthquake, one of the priests feared that it may have been a bad omen. Legends in the game mention that there is yet another mirror, the legendary Holy Mirror, and this particular one is used to prevent the Calamity. Originally housed at the Himuro Mansion, you spend much of the game collecting the broken pieces of this mirror, which shattered when the rituals failed in 1837. In fact, spoiler alert, one of those pieces was used to create the very camera you use throughout the game. It is through this legendary holy mirror that the camera is able to see the spiritual world, although it comes at a cost for the bearer, drawing them further in until they no longer need the camera to see the other side at all. Miku's mother and great-grandmother fell victim to the camera's side effects, and in the case of Miku's mother, it even brought back her ability to see ghosts, which had by that point faded as she grew up. Once all the pieces of the Holy Mirror are gathered, they're used to cleanse the final boss's spirit 
in what's known as Ohadai, a Shinto purification ritual. Thanks to their divine connections, mirrors are often used to ward against evil, and the location of the holy mirror at the end of the game can be seen placed facing the gate to the underworld. This, combined with the blood-soaked ropes from the final ritual, was supposed to keep the underworld at bay. So, what were these rituals that were meant to keep the Hellgate underneath the Himuro mansion closed? The first was the blinding ritual. This took place either on the same day as the demon tag ritual, or sometime shortly before it. The blinded maiden, who was chosen ten years prior in the previous demon tag ritual, is brought before the ceremony master. This is the head of the family, which in Fatal Frame 1 is Lord Himuro. He dons the mask of reflection, which is somewhat reminiscent of a no mask. These masks, depending on the angle you view them from, are supposed to depict different emotions, which allows the performer to simply move their head in a certain way to signify which emotion their character is feeling. The mask of reflection takes that more literally, physically changing into different masks when worn. The blinded maiden is made to kneel before the ceremony master, who then puts the blinding mask on her. This mask comes with two large spikes built into the eye holes, designed to do just what the ritual states. The mask is removed from the now blind maiden and placed on the doorway that allows the Himuro family to enter the rope altar. It's said that the blinded maiden's blood will, in turn, blind the spirits that lurk beyond the Hellgate and keep them weakened in preparation for the final strangling ritual, which takes place roughly three weeks later. In Japanese, the blinding mask is referred to as the mekakushi no men. Mekakushi means to blindfold or to cover one's eyes, which is ironically much gentler and subtler sounding than the English's blinding mask. Once blinded, the blinded maiden then takes part in the next ritual, the demon tag ritual, which takes place on November 26 every 10 years. All of the girls in the Himuro family who are older than 7 years, 9 months, and 25 days take part. There is no particular significance behind this number. It's just something the creators came up with. In this ritual, the blinded maiden, wearing her mask, becomes the Oni, and chases the Himuro family girls around the demon mouth, while the rest of the family watches from above. The first girl caught becomes the next blinded maiden, and the last girl becomes the all-important rope shrine maiden. In Japanese, this ritual is called the Oni Asobi no Gishiki, or the demon game ritual. It's basically a life or death version of tag, which in Japanese is known as onigokko, hence the demon tag name. In onigokko, the person we call it is referred to as oni. Here, the oni takes on an almost literal meaning, as the blinded maiden takes on said role and chases the children to pick who will take part in the next rituals in 10 years time. This ritual is important because it's believed that the girl who can evade the Oni for the longest has the most spiritual power. This will make her a more powerful sacrifice when it comes time for the next and final ritual, the strangling ritual. The strangling ritual, known in Japanese as the Sakinawa no Gishiki, or the tearing of the ropes ritual, takes place roughly two weeks after the demon tag ritual on December 13th. Here, the unlucky winner from the demon tag ritual 10 years earlier, who has been kept sheltered in the Himuro mansion in an attempt to remove all attachments from the world, is prepared to be sacrificed. This powerful maiden, known as the Rope Shrine Maiden, or Nawa no Miko, first cleanses herself in the moonlight of the moon well. Cleansing and purification is, of course, an important part of the Shinto religion, and considering the role she's about to play, she wants to be as clean as possible, inside and out. 
only the Rope Shrine Maiden may enter through the Moonwell. The rest of the Himuro family must enter through the Demon Mouth, as they mustn't sully the Shrine Maiden. These two paths converge at the Rope Altar, where the Shrine Maiden climbs onto a round altar, and ropes are attached to her limbs and neck. These connected devices surrounding the altar that can be wound up, pulling the ropes tight and, eventually, tearing her limb from limb. Ropes are another important part of the Shinto religion. Shimenawa is sacred rope that is used to consecrate sacred areas, and also ward against evil. In the doll room, you can find a doll who is hidden behind Shimenawa, and you've no doubt seen pictures of it around shrines, rocks, trees, and all sorts of objects in Japan. These are holy objects, and they are protected by the rope. At the bottom of the moon well, you can even find the mummified remains of the very first shrine maiden, protected behind the sacred rope. The rope binding the shrine maiden, however, is going to be used to protect the most important place of all, the Hellgate. This rope, soaked in the powerful Shrine Maiden's blood, has for centuries been used to keep the Hellgate sealed. This, alongside the Holy Mirror, keeps the spirits on the other side at bay. During the ritual, a piece of rope is first attached to the Shrine Maiden's right arm, then left, then her right ankle, then left. It's not specified whether the rope attached to her neck comes before or after her limbs. Then, the four priests of the Himuro family, who took care of the Shrine Maiden for the previous ten years, take their place at the end of each rope. The family master, Lord Himuro, takes his place at her head. They crank the devices, eventually tearing the Maiden's limbs and head off, soaking the ropes in her blood. It should be noted that this particular ritual has no basis in real life, none of them do, but they take aspects from the Shinto religion and use them to tell their story. An interview with the game's creators when the game first came out stated that they tried to come up with the most awful ritual they could think of to justify the horrific ghosts that you find around the house. Once the Shrine Maiden has been killed, the family master takes the blood-soaked ropes and uses them to close the Hellgate. This, with the Holy Mirror, is enough to keep the spirits at bay for another ten years, when everything must take place all over again. Of course, the ritual that took place in 1837 failed, because Kirie fell in love with a young man, and thus retained her attachments to this world. This meant that the Sakinawa, used to keep the gate closed, wasn't strong enough, unleashing the calamity and all of the spirits with it. An important aspect in all of the rituals that take place throughout the Fatal Frame series is that the participants have to want to take part. It's that complete detachment to the world that allows them to succeed, and all of these rituals only go wrong when one suddenly finds themselves going back on that. This is particularly Buddhist in nature, and also fitting with the idea of sacrificing oneself for the greater good. All throughout history, people have been willing to sacrifice their lives for others, and death is not seen as an end in Japan, but simply the start of moving on to the other side. The ultimate goal is, depending on whether one follows Shintoism or Buddhism, to become a kami, or to attain nirvana. When one turns their back on that, bad things happen. Usually, bad things that unleash a whole bunch of angry spirits upon the world, that someone with a supernatural camera is going to have to clean up. The game's events and rituals are entirely fictional, but it's interesting to see where the creator's influences came from when trying to design the most terrifying Japanese-style horror that they could. For me, that's what makes these games so good. The creators look at real folklore, real legends, and take existing aspects of Japanese culture to craft something truly terrifying and unique. If you're going to explore an abandoned Japanese mansion sometime, just remember to keep a holy mirror on hand, and don't step past the Shimenawa. 
you might come to regret it.